You're listening to the Parents of Hardworking Teens podcast, episode 96. The ultimate compliment, not to me or about me, but from a teacher to one of our 10WGT students. And what's kind of fun is that it was feedback that was actually initially a criticism and then turned into a bit of a reluctant compliment. But I would consider it the ultimate compliment, the ultimate proof of success and the ultimate in strategic study and performance in assessments. I'll tell you why and of course what it was. I'm Katie Jones and with over 15 years in education as an award-winning high school teacher, international external examiner and as a study coach, I've helped thousands of students skyrocket their results and confidence and this podcast is where I share all my insights, tactics and tips with you, the parent, so you can help your hardworking team get happy, smart and successful in their study and have you both enjoy the journey along the way. This is the Parents of Hardworking Teens podcast. Hey VIPs, I hope you and your teens are doing fantastic and that this new term is getting off to a great start for you. Today I have something a little bit juicy for you that I hope will help you and your teen flip the idea that more is more which I can totally relate to. It is something I'm continuously working on myself. I'm definitely prone to thinking that I always need to do more, work harder, provide more resources when I know intellectually that that isn't always the case, that sometimes less is more, whether that's in teaching, in coaching, in resources and content, and yes, for your teen in their study, or particularly in the writing that they are producing in their study. And this example that I want to share with you today is definitely a great example, very literally, (laughs) of everything that I share here on the podcast and that I train and coach students on. So this episode comes from a consult I had recently with a student who had just completed the 10-week grade transformation program and they happened to mention something super cool that happened that I don't think they realized was as big a deal as I think it is and of course I told them it is because I was chatting with this student and their mum on Zoom. They'd come to the end of the 10-week program and were providing feedback, sharing their experiences with me And as you know, I always like to get into the specifics, the details, the real life nitty gritty. And so I was asking about any particular assessments they'd had or examples of tasks or situations, even just lessons or homework where they had been able to apply an action some of the skills or concepts that they had learned. And they mentioned a situation with an English assessment. Now, this student had always been pretty good at English. They generally enjoyed it and in the mum's words, had a bit of a knack for it. But also in her words, (laughs) she said it was all a bit of a scatter approach. Some of their results were great, some not quite as good. So what happened was... This student had been set an imaginative writing assessment. That is a narrative or a short story in simple speak. And he, the student, had submitted his first draft to one of our group coaching calls. Now, I can't remember the details of exactly what we coached on and covered in terms of feedback and advice that I gave to them. But what I do know, because I did go back and look in my laptop files as I was preparing for this episode, is that all we worked from was his draft and the marking criteria. There wasn't a task sheet, there wasn't a scaffold, or at least he didn't submit one, which was fine because we could work out what he needed to do and not do just from that criteria. And of course, because a short story is a relatively common task, it's nothing weird and wonderful that I needed to figure out or they needed to figure out in order to be able to do it. And based on the feedback to this student on the call, he went away and refined and honed his writing. And that was the last I'd heard about the task until this review call. 
And earlier in the call, his mum had mentioned English and his assessments in general, and specifically said that he now has a much more direct and focused approach. That he used to find it hard to stay focused when he was studying. He used to be pretty easily distracted, had a bit of a track record for writing lots about something, but that something wasn't really what the question was asking. Hence, why she got him enrolled in the ten-week grade transformation program. And in fact, he'd had a year ten history assignment last year that the teacher said was excellent, but was nothing to do with what was actually asked. Hence, one of the things that she said she can see in him already is that he's now studying and working on assessments in a more direct and focused way. And she said, maybe even a little bit too direct and concise was the word she used. Now, the being more focused and direct was because, at least in part, he was more aligned to the criteria. Unlike last year's history assessment, and I would reason that he's able to be more direct and stay more focused because he's clearer on what he needs to do, and importantly, how to do it. Now, the being a little bit too concise. This is the best part of the story. That was because the teacher initially returned his draft simply with a comment. That it was below the word count. Now, that was let's be frank, pretty lazy feedback from the teacher. Now you can go listen to previous episode ninety five if you would like your teen to get more useful feedback from their teachers, a higher level of feedback on their drafts. I definitely talk about that more in the last episode. But although that was not great feedback for this student. Him and his mum did also acknowledge that that may well be based on previous submissions, which were sometimes he admitted incomplete or hadn't really had enough effort put in on his side of things. But here's the cool part: the teacher came back to him again a few days later and said, "Actually, you've addressed everything that you need to, but." Can you fluff it out a little bit? <laughs> I think that last part was in his words rather than the teacher's, or at least I hope so. And as they told me this, I had the biggest grin <laughs> on my face. I loved it because when students nail an answer or a response or a task in that really direct, focused, and succinct way, that, in my book, is gold. You might have heard me talk about my most marks, least words challenge that I do with students sometimes. And yes, this student did then need to go fluff it out a bit <laughs> to meet the word count, and that's fine for an essay or an assignment, or in this case, an imaginative piece. Though, please note there definitely will be ways to do that that further boost marks or reinforce criteria rather than just literally adding words but staying at the exact same level. But when it comes to anything that might be under timed conditions, or where a word count really is pretty tight, and it has your teen thinking, "Yikes! How am I going to cover all of that, or do all of that in the amount of space or words or time that I have?" Then this is an excellent skill to have. It is the opposite of lazy, <laughs> and in my opinion, it is the ultimate in smart study, strategic study. Because I'd say that in my book, at least, hitting every criteria at the top level, within or under the time limit or word count, is actually the ultimate in success. I mean, going forwards beyond schooling and assessment, getting your point across effectively in the most succinct way is definitely a valuable skill. In a speech, in leadership, in training somebody, it's exactly what you want to be. Or being able to complete all aspects of a task or a project, and to the standard expected or beyond, not just within but under a time limit, is kind of a superpower. <laughs> and although this teacher started out with basically a criticism, just focused on the word count, I would say that you're under the word count but you've hit every criteria is the ultimate compliment. 
Now, it might have been a reluctant compliment, <laughs> but from a strategy and performance point of view, I think it's the ultimate compliment your team could get. So the question is, how can your team start to develop or further develop this skill of being focused and direct? Now, another good episode to check out if this resonates is episode 56, where I explain exactly how clear is not basic and why succinct is sophisticated. Because if we take it as a given that your teen has the subject knowledge and understanding that they need, we then need to consider what do they need to know, understand, and be able to do in order to make that happen, to be focused, direct, succinct, to be able to hit the top criteria below the word count or produce a top mark answer within the exam time. So here are a few suggestions to hopefully help. Can they break down and dissect the question or task? In other words, can they identify the command word in the question and the level of response it therefore demands? So if it says something like discuss or analyze, do they know exactly what they need to do and include in their writing and what they don't need to do? So hint, if they're analyzing, they don't need lots of facts or to recount lots and lots of information. They need to do something with that information, which leads us to, are they clear on the focus of the task or question? When it comes to essays, I always talk about topic and focus. So many students end up writing about the topic rather than responding to the focus of the question or of the essay title. So is your teen writing about something or are they responding to the focus of the question? Are they clear on the assessment criteria? In the case of write an imaginative piece, there is no actual question or command word level, but there are very specific marking criteria and there are ways to approach the task that will enable your team to meet those more effectively or readily. And are they clear about the differences in the levels of those success criteria? What will be classed as appropriate versus what will get them up into the effective or discerning levels? And how will they make those come through in their writing? What will the marker be specifically looking for in relation to those? And once they have these things clear, then they'll be able to write, study, or produce, in this mum's words, in a focused and direct way. Otherwise, they may end up taking that scattered approach, stabbing around in the dark a little bit, ending up with inconsistent results or simply writing more than they need to, going over time or the word count because they're hedging their bets a little bit or unfocused in their response or in their study in general. And when your team can do this, if they're in an exam, they're actually going to have time to go back and review and edit and improve their answers and check through everything. Or if they're working on something in class or at home, they're going to have a bit more time for other things, other tasks, or maybe even some free time. <laughs> so to bring this together, more words, more info, more writing does not necessarily mean more success, more marks, more criteria being met. In fact, very often we're aiming for most marks in the least words, or at least I am. <laughs> so on that note, let's wrap this up. I'm sure I could have said all of this more succinctly, more directly, but this is what I've got for you, I'm afraid. Not too much fluff, I hope though. <laughs> now next week, I will have a special update and a special request in relation to the upcoming 100th episode of the podcast. So definitely tune in to next week's episode for that. And until then, have a fantastic week. Share this episode or your favorite episode with just one friend or family member or one school group ready for next week and the following few weeks as we get to a century. <laughs> Take care and I'll see you back here next week. 
you're ready to have your teen achieve their best possible results with less stress, then I want to invite you to enroll them in the 10-week grade transformation program, where they're going to learn the key concepts, skills, and strategies to catapult their performance in assessments and exams. It's risk-free. They either achieve bigger and better results with a whole lot more confidence in 10 weeks, or we refund you in full. Just head over to www.rocksolidstudy.com forward slash program and I'll see you there.